So, Ian, lovely to see you, fresh from Ukraine, which we'll get on to in just a minute. Morning, now, Lord. I know you've seen the front pages of the newspapers. There's yep. one on Sunday reporting BBC star sent pants pic to teen. Mum's shock at X-rated mobile image. Do you think this household name should have been suspended immediately that these allegations came to light pending investigation? The BBC have bungled this, haven't they? Yeah, I don't quite know what they're doing. It's in a mess, uh, clearly. If you read the newspaper reports, you can see that the BBC has tried to play this down from the beginning. Uh, and it's not worked because it's exploded. They don't have any plan. Uh, any uh, inquiries that are taking place seem to be a mess, and that's led to a whole series of reputational damage across the newspapers to the BBC. The BBC should act like everybody else does, immediately suspend somebody pending the investigation, yes. uh, and that way it's clear, and then they can get on with it. At this stage, try and do it quietly and behind the scenes. It never works because somebody's blown the gaff and uh, they're in trouble over it. Now, I know you've just come back from Ukraine literally yep. in the last 24 hours. Where have you been and what have you been doing? Well, I went with uh, Labour MP, Rishnara Ali. Uh, I've been working with a charity called Siobhan's Trust uh, that went out there of their own accord, very British sort of wonderful way of doing things. Right at the beginning of the war, they've been feeding uh, displaced people, first of all, up and around the border, but they've moved right down close to the front. Right. They, they do it through pizzas. They have these big pizza trucks okay. going around cooking these pizzas. It brings a bit of joy to people's but hearts. There are people that, out there. I mean, What's the well, you know, they're, they're, they're worried. Uh, they want this offensive to succeed. Uh, and, but there are many of them, you find, living in very small accommodation, multiple children, all this sort of stuff, because their, their husbands, their partners are at the front uh, and they can't fend for themselves. So the charity brings a bit of joy in their hearts and it's, it's great to see. They've done over a million pizzas to people at, near the front, families that are uh, destitute, etc., which is part of what we do. And there you learn a lot about what's going on yes. and the difficulties they face. And we had lots of meetings with uh, Ukrainian military people as well as some British military people. Well, around. having been on the ground there, I wondered what you made of Joe <clears> Biden's <throat> suggestion or indeed willingness to send cluster bombs to Ukraine. There's some concern about this. The UK, the French and the Germans are saying, not sure this is a good idea because of the collateral damage caused to civilians. What do you think? Well, I don't <coughs> normally get on very well with Joe Biden, but I have to say that I think the Americans are right on this. They've been asked for these by the Ukrainians for a long time because they're facing cluster munitions from Russia. It's all very well for us to sit back and say, oh, we don't like the idea of cluster munitions. But the Russians are using them yes. every day on them, and therefore their problem is twofold. Number one, they still haven't received from NATO enough artillery ammunition. So had they had all that artillery ammunition, they probably wouldn't be making this re request yes. because they would have been able to pound those Russian positions very directly. But right now they suffer two problems. There's a huge minefield the Russians have put across all the way across yeah. Ukraine. It's very deep and they don't have the right equipment to clear those minefields, which has led to a slower advance than was originally anticipated, mostly because we aren't able to supply them, not the British necessarily, but everybody, hasn't supplied them with the right levels of ammunition, and they need that desperately. There is a huge stockpile of these in America, which were never destroyed, and that's why they've asked for those, because they're otherwise not getting the level of ammunition supply. But have the West been found <clears throat> asleep at the wheel here? You're talking about dragging their feet generally on weapons. Obviously, we're still mm. having this debate over air support. What's your view on that? We should have done this ages before. Uh, cluster the... bombs or air support? Well, both. Uh, the cluster, bombs, the, well, support, the, the cluster okay. bombs are there because we haven't done enough yeah. in artillery support. I'm not blaming the UK because the UK has probably done more than most. Yeah. The Americans? But the, the Americans, Germans, the uh, the Americans and the British have done quite a lot. But the biggest problem with the Americans at the moment is the uh, absence of training for pilots on F-16s. I think the Dutch and the Danes are ready to give their F-16s, but their pilots need to be trained. The UK jumped the gun, quite rightly, and said they'd start training, I think, in August. But uh, now President Biden has reacted, uh, which is why we understand he didn't allow Ben Wallace to become the yeah, candidate. What do you think of that? Well, I thought that if it's true, I think it's ridiculously You're petty. You're talking about Ben being. Wallace being blocked from being the head of NATO. He would have been the perfect Jens head. Stoltenberg's been given another year. I know. There's talk of Ursula von der Leyen. I know. She, I mean, was... she was an abject failure. As well, she's the one that slashed all their defence spending, which is why they had next to no equipment when the Ukraine war broke out. So you wouldn't support Van der Leyen? No, I think Ben would have been in a perfect position. He's well trusted by everybody there as well. But is that a sign of Biden's sort of anti-Britishness? We saw this come out when he visited Dublin for longer mm. than Northern Ireland. He's made a number of different comments, hasn't he, that seem to be not exactly nurturing the special relationship? I think so. I think um, somebody described him as viscerally anti-British, uh, coming from his mother, etc. But 
I don't know whether he is or he's not, but I do know that right now there is a big division about attitudes to the UK and America. The Republicans are very keen on strong ties with the UK. All of their candidates have said so. Uh, he is not as keen. He's more lukewarm. He's trying to forge new links with the French and the Germans. But what they find the Americans every time mm. is that these countries don't do anything like the amount of support that comes from the UK when America's in trouble. Yes. And I've always said when America and Britain are parted for various reasons, that's when disasters happen like Vietnam, etc., because we're not there to help get the direction right. So it's important. The UK-US alliance is still the strongest there is because of the amount we spend on defence and the amount of co cooperation we have Would on intelligence. Would the West be stronger with <clears throat> Donald Trump as president again? I, you know, I don't think Trump <laughs> will make a great president uh, if he gets elected. I, I would rather see the others. There's good candidates in the Republican Party at the moment to get elected, and I think it'd be a good idea if some of those Who get a real fancy? crack of the whip. Well, I, I like the governor of California of uh, Florida very yeah, well, but I also time. like uh, Mike Pompeo, who was an excellent state secretary, uh, very good. But group. I'm just thinking about your concerns about China not just Russia, mm. and the idea that actually Biden's been weak and he's been weak on behalf of the West and whether you agree with that. Well, the one thing America has been quite strong on China, and, you know, I'm sanctioned by the Chinese government for calling yes. out uh, uh, the... You Chinese wear that like a badge of honour. In the week. Well, I try, <laughs> I try to avoid it like a badge of honour. <laughs> Otherwise, my family gets sanctioned alongside me as well. So, but the, the Americans, by and large, the one area they are united on generally is on China. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's the important point. Should um, Ukraine be fast-tracked into NATO? I think there needs to be a strong... A process that acknowledges NATO's destination rather than the destination of the Ukraine will be at some point in NATO. Mm -hmm. I understand why NATO is concerned about doing this right now because this would then suck NATO into more commitment which would include ground forces to protect Ukraine from Article 5 which is an attack on one as an attack on all. So I can understand why there's hesitation but we need to send stronger signals that the direction of travel for the Ukraine, yes. all things being equal, is entry into NATO. And that's what they're asking. They know they can't get entry now. They're just asking for some process that says there is a process now. We're accepting that your destination in due course is likely to be there, but it won't happen immediately. Before we get on to Tory matters, I was <coughs> intrigued by your response to the SNP suggestion that drugs should be decriminalised, because I know you've done a lot of work on this for the Centre for Social Justice. This is your think tank. Yep. Um, should drugs be decriminalised, or is this absolutely a ridiculous idea? Anybody that does the work in this knows it's bonkers. It doesn't work. It's been tried everywhere. The moment you do, what happens is the amount of drug taking rises. Gangs love this idea. You know, I know, happen to know that criminal gangs uh, were whooping with delight uh, when they heard this announcement. We know we've got contacts. The truth is, that's what they want because that increases, therefore, the likelihood. A lot of the threat of criminality is one of the reasons why you stifle some of the purchasing power, which keeps the market slightly more under control. Yes. The idea that the war on drugs hasn't won, hasn't been won, you're never going to win an absolute ban on drugs. But what you do is you, you narrow the marketplace and therefore make it more difficult to people to get drugs, means they're less likely to take it. And that means you have to treat those. Mm. Right now, we have a serious crisis going on in drug treatment. What we need is more rehabilitation, yes. not... Just Although opening the doors to the drugs. Tories that have cut funding to drug rehabilitation. Well, this has and been, alcohol funding. Well, this has gone on for a while. I've been involved with, in these organisations, the Centre for Social Justice. The key thing is now better uh, rehabilitation uh, with real choices about outcomes. If you said, look, you can either take the criminal course or you can go to rehabilitation like they do in, 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 in Sweden and Norway, then that would be a better route for us to take. Let's move on to tax. <clears throat> Hunters ruled out more any tax cuts before the next general election. Is that lunacy? Well, you know, the government's always say one thing and then eventually but do... But should he? Well, I, th I personally believe we have to get the economy moving. Far too many people are now suffering because of the issues. I understand of that. A lot of uh, organised uh, chaos by the bank in terms of mm. the inflation level. So interest rates have risen to a degree. I'm worried we're going to overkill the economy yes. with interest rates. So I think what we have to do, and I'm sure they're doing this, is to plan to make sure we can get tax burdens down. But do down. you think Rishi Sunak's doing well? I mean, you back Boris... He's not delivering his five deliverables. Well, there are some externals that are causing a real problem to him, yeah. I have to tell you. And I keep coming back to the fact the bank is responsible for quite a big chunk of why our inflation rate is so high yeah. and why interest rates are higher. Get beyond that, 
What do I instinctively believe that he wants to do? I believe he wants to reduce the burden of taxation. But he's got five delivery rules that can't <coughs> seem to be delivered. We've got the potential for five mm. by-elections. We've got some of your colleagues talking about how you could do with a period in opposition. I'd love to hear from you as a former leader in opposition whether that's a good idea. I think only people who have never been in opposition look forward to opposition. Opposition yeah. is a desert in which nobody really wants to listen to you for a while because they're all interested in the government. Uh, and so you have your infighting and all the other problems go on. It makes it more difficult. The answer is we've got to get our act together now. And I think, therefore, people want to see a choice at the next election. Right now, Labour said next to nothing about their policies. They're getting away with just drifting along on the basis all will be better under Labour. Yeah. We need to be very clear about what the choice will be at the next election. But you're in a really marginal seat. Are you going to win that seat? Well, I'm certainly Woodford going to fight Green? it, and I plan to win it, but uh, like everything else... But are you worried? Are you worried we might be facing some kind of Tory apocalypse come 2024? I don't think this is 1996-97. Uh, I went through that, and it was different. They could name you who the leader of the Labour Party was on the doorstep, Tony Blair. They thought they had a Scottish banker, solid, dependable, sitting next yeah. to him, and that this was like a soft Tory party. Then none of that takes place when you're on the doorstep. They can't name you who the leader of the Labour Party is. They don't know a single policy that they've got. They don't know anything at all about the nature of the Labour Party post-Corbyn. So they're talking about anger with us because of the problems, yes. quite rightly so. But what they're not able to say to you is... I know why I want to vote for the other side. What they're saying at the moment is I'm not going to vote for you. So the question is, can we in the next 12 months sort that out and give them that choice, let them know that the only way to get this done, post the worst crisis we've ever had, we always forget COVID punched a hole through every single area of, of government. And so getting this sorted now and giving them that choice, uh, that is a lower tax base, lower burden, get government off your backs all the time, all that stuff is, to me, okay. sensible.